Hello, welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your host, Jeff Martin and Mark Friedel from ChemPoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and on Apple Podcasts. For those watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this provides market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, for the first time in a long time, our first story is not about the freezing weather that we saw in the Gulf Coast region back in February. Um, it is in regards to uh, the chemical activity barometer. Uh, the, chemical ac the chemical activity barometer, which is a leading economic indicator used and created by the American Chemistry Council, rose 1.2% in March, following a 1% increase in February. On a year-over-year -year basis, the barometer rose 5.5% in March. The latest CAB reading is consistent with solid expansion of commerce, trade, and industry into the fourth quarter. The CAB has four main components, each consisting of a variety of indicators. First, production. Second, equity prices. Third, product prices. And fourth, inventories and other indicators. In March, the production-related indicators were positive. Trends in construction-related resins and related performance chemistry were solid and suggest further expansion past the week, the week February home sales and housing starts. Resins and chemistry used in other durable goods were strong. Plastic resins used in packaging and for consumer and institutional applications were positive. Performance chemistry for industry was mixed. U.S. exports were positive, while equity prices showed further gains. Product and input prices were positive, as were inventory and other supply chain indicators. So this is a very positive news, given the pretty significant disruptions that we saw due to the cold weather in the Gulf Coast region in uh, uh, mid-February that impacted a lot of March supply. So probably... Uh, those pricing movements, which are two of the four components, are adding pretty significantly to this this uh, this index. Similarly, the seasonally adjusted IHS market U.S. manufacturing purchasing managers index, or the PMI, uh, came in at 59.1 in March, which was up from 58.6 in February, and this is the second highest result since the data collection began in 2007. Basis means good producers are reported the fastest upturn in new business in almost seven years. Anecdotal evidence suggested that the expansion resulted from a broad base strengthening of client demand, led by a record surge in new orders for consumer goods. Some companies are also reported stockpiling among their customers amid soaring input prices. New export orders also increased, albeit a softest pace in three months. Um, exactly. Moving on to crude oil prices, crude oil prices have also um, edged up uh, fairly significantly in the last three to six months. Um, U.S. crude oil inventories, however, have edged lower in the week ending March 26 as refiner refinery demand tested one-year highs. Total commercial crude stocks fell 880,000 barrels to 500, just over 500 million barrels last week. The EIA, or Energy Information Administration, uh, the data showed leaving storage levels around 5.5% above the five-year average for this time of year. The U.S. crude draw was concentrated in the Midwest, where stocks slid nearly 1.5 million barrels and on the West Coast, which saw nearly or, or just over one and a quarter million barrel decline in inventories. So all this uh, um, inventory has been um, likely driving uh, the pricing up. However, today, we're, today as of uh, the end of the day, uh, April 5th, 2021, we are seeing uh, crude oil prices fall fairly significantly. I haven't seen the news as to why what's driving that, but it has fallen below $60 a barrel. Uh, chemical rail car traffic in North America continues to rebound from the sharp decline that followed the winter storm that we've been speaking of for numerous weeks here. Uh, during the week that ended March 27th, the volume was up 2% from the previous week, 
and down 1.8% year over year, according to data released by the Association of American Railroads. So that's good to hear. Yeah, for sure. All right, moving on to new product introductions and other company announcements. Um, I think the loan story today is around ExxonMobil and Porsche as they are testing advanced biofuels and renewable lower carbon e-fuels as part of a new agreement to find pathways toward potential future consumer adoption. The first iteration of ESO renewable racing fuel is a blend of primarily advanced biofuels and is specially formulated by ExxonMobil's in-house team of scientists and engineers. Analysis indicates the potential to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions with a liquid fuel. The fuel will be tested in race conditions with Porsche's high performance motorsports engines during the 2021 Porsche Mobile One Super Cup race series. Porsche and ExxonMobil's collaboration will also focus on e-fuels, which are synthetic fuels made from hydrogen and capture carbon dioxide. Yeah, I know it's funny that they start off the uh, these high-end fuels in the uh, race car series um, to kind of test them out and prove their viability for consumer use. Moving on to now to our M&A news. Um, Confirming a Wall Street Journal article in December, and one that we talked about in our podcast from that week as well, Sinochem released a statement Wednesday that China has approved the merger between the country's top two chemical companies. This is paving the way for another supersized state-run enterprise that Beijing hopes will become a dominant global player. The Sinochem Group and China National Chemical Corp, also known as Chem China, will be placed under a new holding company and overseen by the government body that holds state enterprises. This is about a $150 billion company is what, when you combine them as estimated to be. The China Chinese body called the State Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission controls both the companies. The new holding company has not been named and the timetable for the restructuring has not yet been given. Well, this might rival the largest chemical company out of China, Sinopec. Uh, but but likely likely not quite. They're they're fairly large, and they oftentimes go neck and neck with BASF as the largest chemical company in the world. Okay, next story um, is out of Denmark. Hempel says it has completed the acquisition of Paints and Coatings maker Waddle, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Sherwin Williams. The deal significantly strengthens Hempel's footprint in Australia and New Zealand. The company says Hempel agreed in February to buy Waddle from Sherwin Williams for an undisclosed amount. Hempel says it has received formal customary approval from the relevant authorities in Australia and New Zealand, and that the acquisition will close or are, has already closed on the 31st of March. Next up, the uh, Netherlands Royal DSM Company has reached an agreement to acquire the flavor and fragrance bio-based intermediates business of the U.S. Ameris, which extends DSM's offerings in aroma ingredients and bio-based ingredients for the flavor and fragrance and cosmetic industries. DSM paid an upfront consideration of $150 million U.S. The deal will add seven intermediate products to DSM's existing personal care and aroma ingredients activities, extending its offerings in bio-based ingredients for the flavors and fragrance and cosmetic industries. One of the products of the products acquired, four are already generating meaningful sales in EBITDA, two are brand new products, and one more is under development and will be added to DSM's existing personal care and aroma ingredients business. Well, it's just another story um, highlighting DSM's shift in portfolio. And they're clearly getting out of more industrial applications and diversifying into uh you know more higher regulated um, um higher end applications such as personal care pharma life science um, just part of their transformation yep and a lot of activity and new product development also in that flavor and fragrance uh, market as well we keep we see a lot of stories coming out of those industries for sure all right that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions, we will return next week with a fresh batch of Industry Reactions. And until then, stay safe.
Thanks, everyone.